And unfortunately for the Stags, they are dealing with some impactful injuries as well. Chris Mido is not available tonight. He is day to day with a lower back injury. Jason Itapai, who would have seen some time off of the bench with Mido available. Unfortunately, he is done for this season. He has a stress fracture in one of his legs and he is going to require surgery. The long-term prognosis is good for Itapai, but he will not be available for the Stags for the rest of the season. Jordan Jones gets Marist on the board. Well, Jordan Jones has been a pain in the side of Fairfield last year in two games, 31 points. How about 14 for 19 from the floor? They go right inside, he goes to the left hand. Good start for the Red Foxes. Very aggressive Red Foxes team, Joe. We're probably gonna see some zone out of them in this game tonight. As Supreme Cook is bottled up, then gets off the shot anyway and rattles it home to tie the game at two. Well, both five men go into their weak hands. Impressive move by both Cook and Jones. So the shorthanded Maris team trying to regroup. To be quite honest, from what I understand, we came very, very close to not having this game being played tonight. Because uh, Maris was right on the cut line. One more positive test for them, and this game would have been postponed, which unfortunately in recent weeks has become the rule and not the exception. As Fairfield fans know, they had their first two MAC games of this calendar year, if you count December 31st, stretching it a little bit as this calendar year. Let's put it this way. The restart of the MAC season was postponed for the Stags. Had their game against Manhattan postponed on New Year's Eve and their scheduled game against Iona postponed on January 2nd, last Sunday. Four seconds to shoot here as the Stags will have to get off a quick shot. Maris played Iona last Sunday. These were two teams that didn't have an opponent last Sunday, so they got together and played each other. Three to shoot for the Stags. Alan Jean Rose puts it up, front rims it. Cook keeps it alive. Nice hustle play for the Stags and Cook. Reset to 20. Wojcik looking to find a stroke, and there it is. Breaks the tie, and Jake Wojcik. That's a good sign for him, Joe. He's been struggling with that outside shot. He has been struggling. He gets the, uh, the nod, the starting nod, gets the open three. It's a good defensive sequence by Maris, but unfortunately, they didn't close out by grabbing the rebound, giving the Stags a second opportunity. Wojcik for the three. Nice hands there by Alan Jean Rose. He's got the long arms and tipped that pass out of bounds. So Marist and Iona got together last Sunday. And, Joe, this is a Marist team that had Iona on the ropes twice this year. In Poughkeepsie, they lost a game that Rick Pitino said afterward that we had really no right to win that game. The Gales went on a 14-0 run. To defeat, Ion, to defeat Maris that night. And then Sunday, the Red Foxes had a late lead. As the shot clock is beaten there, and that was Ricardo Wright who makes it a one-point game. Well, we highlighted Ricardo Wright at the top of the show, and I talked about his ability to get into the lane and shoot over people at 6'4". He's got good size. But the one problem with Maris this year, again, this is a defensive-oriented team that is better offensively this season, like Fairfield. But their big bugaboo this year has been the turnovers. Yeah, their assist to turnover ratio is last in the league. Yeah, 335. Last time I checked, 335 out of 350 in the country. So they've got to do a better job of taking care of the basketball, no doubt. Yeah, they turned it over 19 times in that loss on Sunday against Iona. Caleb Green, catch, shoot, off the mark. Wright's been very active early in this game. 13 preseason all MAC. Mack all rookie selection last year, and speaking about the turnovers for Maris, there's one right there. Unforced turnover. Noah Davis, again, getting a starting nod because of the COVID uh, situation with Maris. A little too quick on his feet. You know, this is a Maris team, Bob, that goes 10 deep, that plays 12-plus minutes, and Fairfield goes about 9-10, so it's going to be interesting. There may be that guy for either team or both teams that's going to come off the bench that normally doesn't contribute that's going to help their team win tonight. Taj Benning had that shot blocked by Jordan and Jones. Harass me, feeding Jones in the post. Puts it up at the baby hook. It is good. And that gives Maris the one-point lead. Well, you're going to have to make a decision on Jordan Jones. You're going to have to front him, get some help on a double team, make him kick the ball out because he's had his way against Fairfield in the last two or three games. Harass me the steal. Working on Benning. Euro stepping into the lane. 
missing the running shot, and Wright chases it down and hoists up a three and puts it through, and it's 9-5 Marist. 41% from three. You know, some people are covered when a guy's close to them, okay? He's one of these guys at 6'4". Even if you're close to him, Bob, he'll shoot over you. So you got to get him out of his comfort zone. Stags moving it around the perimeter, and Alan Jean Rose trying to penetrate. Instead, loses the dribble off of his leg, and it goes out of bounds. An unforced turnover there on the Stags. Substitutions for both teams. We'll check them here as we reset it with Maris getting the ball back following that second turnover of the game against the Stags. Braden Bell in the game now for Marist. And that is Harris, the freshman out of Manalapan, New Jersey. Jersey Shore kid. Played his high school basketball at Rutgers Prep. Bell spinning, turning, hitting. Braden Bell. Third season as a Red Fox out of Texas, junior college transfer, extends this lead to 11-5 as Wojcik puts up a three and hits another one. So Jake Wojcik has hit back-to-back -back threes for the Stags, and that one ends a 9-0 Maris run. And he's only 30%. We talked about how he's in a slump. Last year he was 38%. This year 30%, so two for two from three. And that's a huge start, especially for this injury-depleted uh, Fairfield team. Right, working on Wojcik to the left hand. No good. Defended well there by Jake, and Chrysler has the rebound. Zach Chrysler on the floor now for the Stags. As Wojcik thought about a real deep three, instead gives up for T.J. Long in the game now for the Stags. Caleb Green tossing for Chrysler on top. One bounce, and Wojcik grabs it. Long, quick trigger shot off of the mark. And Maris, Bob, picked preseason by the coaches number three. And they could very easily, as you mentioned, be 3-0 and with two wins over Iona. Absolutely. They um, really rue, I'm sure, uh, both of those games against Iona as we talked about the possibility of Maris showing some zone in this game, and they come out in the zone as Jake Wojcik, who had hit a couple of threes, misses that one, but Alan Jean Rose is tied up and... Let's see the call here. Uh, looks like we got a foul during the tussle. Phil Celestio, Tommy Deneen, John Gaffney are three officials. Let's take a look, Joe. That's a great rebound. That, that's a rebound you're not supposed to get. And there's that cylinder rule, Bob. Uh, you, you, a player now has the right not to swing his elbows, but to move from side to side. And if you get in that cylinder area, it's a foul. Good call by the officials. Javon Cooley, the foul, and the player he did foul is the player who just turned it over right there. AJR, Alan Jean Rose gives it up. Three turnovers on the Stags. And with the injury to Chris Mido with the bad back, AJR has moved, Alan Jean Rose has moved from the three spot to the four spot. Yeah, and if you're just joining us, the Stags are dealing with some injuries. No Chris Mido as you get another look at that turnover on Alan Jean Rose. Stoppage of play here, not quite sure what they're discussing. I'm looking at the clocks and they seem to be okay. But um, this is a chance again to reset as far as the injuries are concerned. No Chris Mido, he is out right now. They're saying he's day to day with a back injury. Jason Edipai, that's actually the more distressing news. This is a guy who would have definitely seen some playing time now because of the Mido injury, Joe. But uh, Jason Edipai returned from practice after the Christmas break, and he just couldn't go. And finally, they, they took some tests, and he has a stress fracture of the leg, and they've got to do surgery. Now, it sounds incongruous, a stress fracture and, and, and surgery, but he's going to be out for the year. And I asked Jay Young, Will he be okay next year? And they think he'll make a full recovery. But he's not going to be around for the Stags the rest of this season. Mido, hopefully they get back sooner. But you never know with the backs, Joe. You've, you've had back trouble. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, that's a problem. And here's a young man who um, had a good game, one of his better games in the loss against Wagner, had 10 points in 21 minutes. But what was impressive, he had three, three really good post moves. Yeah. Yeah, you made a point about, about that when we spoke with Jay right. earlier this earlier this week on the podcast, and uh, 
Anyways, Chris Mido hopefully will be back this weekend. Now both teams are cooling off a little from the field, although the Red Foxes have a second chance here as they swing it around in the block shot by T.J. Long. And then Cooley stepped out of bounds. That was Javon Cooley who had it rejected. And then after the T.J. Long block, Cooley and the Red Foxes give it up. Well, here, here's a problem early on. There's the great block. But right now, if you're Fairfield, you're a little concerned. While you're playing good defense, Bob, they're not finishing the possession. It's four offensive rebounds already for Marist, and we're not even seven minutes in. So Fairfield's got to do a better job. Again, repeat, repeating myself, but finishing the play. Remember, long shots, long rebounds. This day and age, on a shot, if you're guarding a perimeter player, you can't go running in for the rebound. You've got to check your man, even if it's beyond, if it's beyond the arc. Long gives it up, and then Long commits the foul. Selle came away with the ball after the turnover. Turnover is a problem early in this game for the Stags, Joe, and we had mentioned how it was Marist that is the more turnover-prone team statistically. Well, it's not surprising, Bobby. And again, you don't want to make excuses for anybody, but this is a Fairfield team that was on pause, and they've only had a couple of practices, so I I'm going to sit here and say it's a possibility that they're a little rusty. Ma Marist, on the other hand, has been able to play through the last couple of weeks and, and play pretty well. Harass me, fakes right, gives up left side for Bell. He's defended, the kick up top for right, penetrating, hanging in the air, and it's going to be a fair field foul. This Maris team showing a lot of spunk. We've talked about the fair field injuries, but this is an extremely shorthanded Maris team. As you get a look at that last foul. Yeah, it's a close one. You've heard it before, Bob. The toughest call to make is the block charge call, but... Again, Ricardo Wright at 6'4". Even though he's a sophomore, Bob, he's been able to play a lot of minutes in his career. So you got to call him an experienced player. So he knows when to shoot the three. He knows when to shot fake. There's Coach Dunn. Uh, we talked about a great coach. Actually won a champ MAC championship uh, for St. Peter's not in, too long in ago. In this building. In this building. Good call by you. But Ricardo Wright is a special player and only a sophomore. He eventually will be a first-team All-League player in this conference. Chris Lurk was called on that foul. He leaves the stags and charges taken, but that time picked up the foul. Backdoor cut, Caleb Green. Nice pass from Chrysler, and Green finishes to make it a two-point game. See, Zach Chrysler does a lot of the little things. His shooting percentage is up. He's basically a three-point shooter, Bob. 88% of his attempts are threes. He's shooting over 40%. That time showing the ability to make the scoring pass. Stags man-to-man. -man. Jones gave it up. Bell for Sele off of one leg, missed it. Nice rebound for Jones. Put back, good. Jordan Jones makes it a four-point game. Two things, Bob. You saw him get the ball with two hands and two eyes. Did not panic, did not rush. Took the user. They were supposed to play Manhattan and Iona, and both those games were postponed for COVID reasons. And Jao Ituka, Raheem Sullivan, Victor Eno, all unavailable tonight for Marist. They're in the health and safety protocols, and as I understand it, Maris was one more positive test away today from having to call this game off. So we're all happy we were able to play this game. And you know what? Both these teams are competing at a very high level here considering what they've all been through. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, they were happy to be here. We know what's going on, you know, COVID and, and uh, the Delta variant and this, that, and the other. We had eight inches of snow in this area. Yeah. So, you know, I... I don't know what's uh, up next, but uh, we've been able to handle it and just happy to be here. But uh, long rebound that right, right there on that miss by Marist, and uh, they got uh, Jordan Jones on the push off uh, on the over the back call. Supreme Cook back in the game, draws the triple team. They swing it up to Benning, flips it for Green. Now Cruz, the jab step in the hole. Puts it on the floor, spinning, losing it. Ball is loose, it goes out of bounds, and a last touch Maris. So with three to shoot, the Stags will inbound. Well, real quick, Bob, this is one of those teams that you're not going to be able to put the ball down in the paint more than two times. They're quick to the ball. Cruz likes to pivot in the lane, take a couple extra dribbles. It's going to be hard for him. He's got that maybe become more of a passer in this game. Caleb Green knows to shoot, and he's having trouble. Tosses it out to Cruz. Two, one. Cruz puts it up. Benning keeps it alive, and then Ricardo Wright comes away with it for the Red Foxes. 
One end to the other, and the lay-in is good, and I don't think Jay Young's too happy about the transition defense there. No, too easy in transition, and first of all, give Maris credit as they go back to a 2-3 zone. It's going to be hard for Fairfield to score from out-of-bounds plays because John Dunn and his staff do a terrific job of scouting under out-of-bounds plays. Cruz left alone. He rushed that three. He had a great look, but I think he rushed it a little bit, and Maris comes back, and a three-pointer put up from the corner by Sam Sele. In and out, six-point lead for the Red Foxes. Stags having trouble getting into an offensive rhythm in this game. Runner by Benny, way off of the mark. Cook, a good rebound, but it's slapped down. Nice dig down there by Wright, who feeds ahead for a streaking break in his first half. And Joe, the Stags need to regroup here. Well, uh, I talked earlier about Jordan Jones able to get the rebound and keep it up. That time, Supreme Cook got the offensive rebound, brought it down. And I'll say it again, you cannot put the ball on the deck or bring it down. This, this uh, Maris team is very well coached. And they're going to they're gonna get to the ball quicker than most teams. A steal by Maris led to the easy dunk for Wright. Well, Taj Benning with the turnaround jumper. A much needed two points for the Stags. Ends a 6-0. Maris run. Sele swings it over for the freshman Harris. Jordan Jones. The repost for Jones. Cook on him. Jones kicks it out. Good de defense here by the Stags. No look pass. That is... Bell slicing in and dunking it through. He shed Allen Jean Rose and then slammed it home. Yeah, Supreme Cook on the weak side has got to shuffle his feet over, get in the lane. Not necessarily be a shot blocker, but cause uh, the Maris player to miss or to, uh, to get an offensive foul. On the reset for the Stags, they give it up again and a turnover. And get in with a hard dribble. You can't telegraph passes against this Maris team. You're seeing a lot of zone out of Marist, and um, that is not normally the way they go. They're back in the man-to-man, -man, but of course, desperate times require desperate measures, and Maris very, very shorthanded tonight. Nice pass in the post for Supreme Cook, but had the shot blocked, and Marist has it back as Bell gives for the trailer. Harris, they swing it around. Sele to Harris. He's a good three-point shooter. Too strong that time. And Benning yanks down the rebound. Stags down eight. 8.20 to go in this first half. And sloppiness there by the Stags. Definitely out of sync. As you mentioned, Bob, both of these teams will play man-to-man. -man. Maris will go zone. Now, in the first matchup against Iona, Bob, Maris surprised everybody by going 40 minutes of zone and almost came, a, came away with a win against Iona. Yeah, John Dunn said he wanted to show them a look that he didn't think they would expect, and they certainly didn't. Maris has two MAC losses, both of them against Iona. They have a win against Ryder. That was a um, road win. They went down to Lawrenceville and beat Ryder. So they're one and two in the MAC. Stags are 2-0. and oh. Seems like uh, a long time ago since they swept that Buffalo trip to get to 2-0. and oh. Under 10 to shoot for Marist. Harris works off the screen. Three to shoot. Harris off the dribble. Looks ball foul. And it's hard, to, it's hard to get into this building. This is not Fairfield's building on campus. There's the Westchester Knicks that play here. There's a hockey team that plays here. So any makeup game is pretty much going to be in the afternoons. So a 2 o'clock start for the Stags on Tuesday afternoon as Sam Kelosele streaks to the hoop, makes it 22-12, first double-digit lead of the night for Marist. And, Bob, that's 16 points in the paint, and most of them been on dribble drives. Fairfield's got to do a better job of helping and then recovering out to their man. Stags come into this game after only four days of practice. They returned after uh, the brief Christmas break. They went home for Christmas, came back to campus on the 26th as Supreme Cook slices in and squeezes it home. Stags returned from the Christmas break and then came the rash of positive tests that led to uh, basically a shutdown of the program for a while. They went into pause and those two MAC games postponed and they're li literally trying to get conditioned again. It may be a while before you see them back totally in, in basketball shape collectively. 
Stags trying to generate something resembling to run in this game. They haven't had any of that so far in this first half. Benning trying to create, turn around doesn't go. Rebound fought for. Harassme came away with it, into the block shot by Benning, but right into the hands of Jones. He'll put it back up. And Jared Jones is having a good first half for the Red Foxes, and make that Jordan Jones is having that strong first half. Maris wishes they had Jared. You th you're thinking? I'm thinking of Jared Jordan, Jared the point guard. That's right, many Jared. Years ago, yes. terrific point guard. But that's the fifth offensive rebound for uh, Maris, and their seventh point on second chance uh, rebounds. That's a tie up and stops the clock with 12 seconds to go on the timer. 5.55 to go in a challenging first half for the Stags. Who will, who will inbound here again with 12 to shoot. Caleb Green will trigger the play, looking, snapping it out for Cruz. Asus is scoreless. T.J. Long looking for his offense. There is Cruz from the elbow. Three to shoot. Knocks it down. So right on cue, Asus Cruz responds with his first bucket. Yeah, you can't leave Cruz open 15 feet in. He got it at the end of the shot clock. Turned. No pressure. Nobody on him. Easy two for Fairfield. Good job of probing that zone. Fairfield came into this game as the fourth leading scoring team in the back as Braden Bell makes it rain. Deep three. 27 to 16. Wojcik misfires. I said, Bell, that was Selle, I beg your pardon. And there is a dunk streaking in another couple of points in the paint for the Red Foxes. And that time it was Selle who hit that three, and Selle dunks it through to make it 29 to 16. Yeah, and another dribble drive that ends up in an easy two for the Red Fox. It's going to be interesting. This is a time, if you're a zone team, Bob, I've said this before, and Jay Young and Fairfield are not, but if you're a zone team, this is a time where you want to pack in a zone, okay, because they're getting dribble, they're getting beat off that dribble drive pretty much every possession. Yeah, that cell A3 was only the second three of this game for Maris. The majority of their points have been... Zero footers, as Ed Cooley used to call them. <laughs> Dunks and easy lay-ins. Yeah, put backs with dribble drive layups. Harassme puts up a three. This is a Maris team, by the way, that they can knock down the threes. They've hit as many as 13 in the game this year. TJ Long is fouled on a three-point attempt. <laughs> John Dunn. Upset with the uh, defender there, Braden Bell, who uh, got a piece of the shooter there, T.J. Long. I mentioned uh, earlier in the broadcast how Long let out a scream of frustration after missing a, uh, a three-pointer. Now, he's going to get to the line here for three free throws, and he's an excellent free throw shooter, and he just needs to settle down. As, as you well know, Joe, shooter, shoot, and it'll eventually come back to him. Well, he was a uh, two-time... Uh, Freshman of the week, early on, lost some confidence. You look at Coach Young and his staff. Remember, if you play for Jay Young, you got to play both ends. So T.J. Long is certainly a good shooter. He's a good basketball player. I right. think we're doing an injustice if we say he's just a shooter. He's got good court savvy. Just got to do it on the defensive end a little more. He had a block earlier in this game. He makes three free throws to make it a 10-point game, 29-19. Maris the lead. Bell handing off for... Sam Kelosele, good-looking player, who steps into a three, rattles it home, 32-19. And Sele lighting it up here in the first half for the Red Foxes. He's in double figures with 10. Chrysler, quick release, off of the mark. Marist has it. Red Foxes in the road red uniforms. Sele, the catch, the drive, the kick out. Good ball movement here by the Red Foxes. Arasme misses the three, and the Stags will push it ahead with Wojcik. One bouncing for Cruz. Arasme on him. We know that has abandoned him in 
in recent games. Early in the season, Stags were knocking down threes with regularity. Has not been there. Well, what happens is a scouting report becomes out, and you got to push. They push the opponents push out on the three-point shots. You got to be able to get those tough twos, and Fairfield has not done that lately. Bad turnover there by T.J. Long gave it up, and Marist has it back with exactly three minutes to go in this first half. Fairfield led five to two. Then Marist went on a 9-0 run. They have not looked back since then. Shot clock under the Red Foxes. And Harassme gives it up. Unforced turnover there on the Red Foxes. And, Bob, we've seen this Fairfield team under Jay Young rebound. In other words, they started out last year 2-12, and 12 and they worked their way into the conference finals. So they're going to, you know, in all due respect to Fairfield, the last three games that we talked about where they struggled offensively against the Atlantic 10 team, UMass, against a very good defensive team, Wagner, and this Maris team is also defensively, very, very good. So they're going to have to figure it out, and I think they will. It's a long season, provided you don't have a season cut short by, by COVID. Supreme Cook, good-looking post move, and with the left hand, puts it through. Yeah, he uh, he has developed into a big-time uh, center right in front of us. Last year, we talked a lot about how he used to post low and wind up under the basket, but now he has the ability to go not only go right, but also go left, and you saw that nice touch with that jump hook. He now has six, two minutes to go in the half. Ricardo Wright decides to take the three. Graces the rim, Wojcik hopping up the middle of the floor, zigzagging with the bounce, takes it into the paint and floats it up and puts it through. Some sort of isolation dribble drive. I would be shocked if Maris shot a three, especially early in the clock. Stags with some man-to-man -man pressure, length of the floor, Caleb Green picking up the frosh guard Harris at midcourt here. Sele, has had a good first half. He's bottled up by Cruz. Under 90 seconds to go in the half. Sele puts it on the floor. Fouls call, reach in on Green. Stags have a couple of fouls to give actually, several fouls to give here late in the first half. That was the fourth team foul on the Stags. It does give Maris some more time back on the shot clock. Reset to 20. 1.23 to go in the half. Ricardo right. That's Erasmi. A lefty with the right hand dribble. Now puts it up with the left hand way off the mark. So the Stags try to continue this run. Down by nine with the ball and a minute five to go in the first half. Maris man to man and Wojcik has it poked loose by Harasby. Green floating it for Cook. Double teamed in the post, got off the shot anyway, short. Caught by Benning and with his back to the basket, put it through. The foul was called and I don't believe the basket counted, Joe. I believe the whistle blew during that sequence and the play had been blown dead. So yeah, the foul came with Cook in the act of shooting. And it was Harris on the dig down and committing the foul that sends Supreme Cook to the line. 59% free throw shooter makes the first. Fairfield averages 74 points a game on the season, fourth best in the MAC, but they uh, only had 50 in their last game back on December 23rd against Wagner. And just uh, at 25 here late in the first half, but they have scored the last six in this game. Well, it's a Fairfield team last year, Bob, that averaged 62, so they're a little more well-rounded, especially when Caleb Green has played as well as he can these last seven games. They're a little more balanced. They can get scoring from different ways, but they need a stop here. Ricardo Wright fading, missing. And with a four-second different shot clock to game clock, here come the Stags trying to continue this run. They have trailed by as many as 13. They're down by seven with the ball. 15 to shoot, 20 seconds to go in this first half. And you better have good defensive balance in your fair, if you're Fairfield. You don't want to miss here and give up an easy basket to Marist in transition. Green light for Green. Here is Wojcik, one to shoot, got it off. Nope, shot clock violation. So the Stags did not get off a shot in time. 
you know, frustrating possession. Well, one one of those, you, you know, you can argue, like, why are you holding for one shot? You don't really have a group of guys that can play off the dribble a lot. I don't disagree with the decision by Jay Young, but, you know, this Fairfield team needs that player that can get somebody at the end of the shot clock to get a basket. There's Maris with two and one and a half. The, the Stags having only four days to get ready for this game after a lengthy COVID pause. I asked Jay, well, how do you deal with that, knowing that there's no good answer? He said, what you have to do is hope that you just um, have your principles kick in and you lean on those fundamentals. Alan Jean Rose with the steal and almost got the basket to drop there. And it's a good start for the Stags, who, as we mentioned, ended the first half on a 6-0 run and off to an encouraging start here in the opening seconds of half two. And Alan Jean Rose, Bob, is uh, who's been really good, uh, Caleb Green, the last seven games, you know, averaging almost uh, 12 points a game, 66% from the field, was invisible in the first half, only played about seven, eight minutes and zero points. So it's important when you're undermanned, as both teams are, is to get production from guys that usually give you that production. And Alan Jean Rose has been uh, quiet tonight. One out of two from the foul line for the native of Martinique. Six point Marist advantage. They've led by as many as 13. Selle had a good first half. Not that time, a supreme cook. Corrals it for the Stags, who are trying to get to 3 0 in the back. Wojcik steps into a three, rattles out. Halfway in, falls into the hands of Noah Harris. You know, Bob, it's a miss, but it's a confident miss. He came off that down screen, okay, shot the ball, didn't hesitate. That's a good sign for Fairfield. Selle misses the three. Caleb Green, head up, now accelerates the runner. No good, but he was fouled. And he's limping a little bit, Joe, as um, he walks it off after being fouled on that dribble drive and looks okay. This is the last thing the Stacks need is another player hampered by injury. Get another look. Yeah, I thought there was some contact there um, by Harris, and uh, it's a good call by the officials, but Green uh, doubling over in pain there, but he's a guy that uh, they need out there. As I mentioned, the last two games, one was in overtime, 85 minutes. He played in 80 of those 85 minutes. Cook with the shoulder shimmies, puts it up, had it deflected, thought he was fouled, and here come the Red Foxes looking for their first points of the second half. Steal by Green. Good defensive play. He feeds it ahead in traffic for Allen Jean. Rose who puts it through, and the points come in transition. That time for the Stags. Good defense turns into good and easy offense. Great steal by Green. Nice threaded the needle with that pass in traffic, and AJR is terrific in transition. Tough to stop him. Jones on the scoop does not deliver. Fairfield on a 9-0 run going back to the first half. They are down four in a game. They've trailed by as many as 13. We're going to have a, a foul away from the ball. Let's see what they've got. It's going to be a Marist hold. Bob, they got harassed me playing Caleb Green, who's trying to cut through the basket. There's a lot of contact going on. I've said it before in our broadcast. You know, both teams go back to their, to their uh, locker room at halftime and talk about strategy. Referees do too. So maybe they're going to decide to call this game a little tighter. That fastball gets thrown out of bounds. Caleb Green looking to the corner. Tossed it away, and that stops that Stags run for the, for the moment. Bob, two things you hardly ever see from Fairfield defensively is his own and his full court pressure, especially early in the game or early in the second half. You're seeing it now, and that's the adjustment Jay Young wants to make. Maybe his philosophy is to take, make Maris take some time off the clock so when they get to half court, they'll have less time to dribble drive and get in their comfort zone. Shot clock is down at 10. Ricardo Wright in trouble, and he turned it over. He traveled. So that Stags defense has really intensified here in the opening minutes of the second half. Well, we know what he said, Jay Young did. We don't know how he said it. Okay, I don't think we want to know how he said it. <laughs> but the point is this team come out with more energy defensively, and they've gotten themselves back in this game. It's almost like... A different team we're watching here in the opening minutes of the second half. Wojcik turns the corner. Now he stops. Gives for Benny. Green. 
Guarded by Wright. The toss on top to Allen Jean Rose. Benny dribbling through a double team. Puts it up, spins out. Cook couldn't get to go, to go down on the dunk attempt on the follow. Marist has it back. Boy, if that dunk had gone down for the Stags, the bench and the fans here would have erupted. Selle puts on the brakes. Dangerous pass taken away by Alan Jean Rose. And off of his backside, gets rid of it for Wojcik. And here come the Stags off another Maris turnover. Cook on top. Benning. Benning driving hard with the left hand. No good. Cook the rebound, but a whistle blows the play dead. And to go the other way, as I believe Cook pushed off as he tried to clear out space. And... It goes back to the Red Foxes, who have yet to score in the second half. Well, that was an easy call for John Gaffney. Supreme Cook used his left hand in full view of everybody in his building, pushed off. But, you know, here's a replay here. There's the drive. That's an easy call, Cook with the push. Two fouls on Cook, and that's uh, a critical number for the Stags, considering there's no Chris Mido tonight for the Stags. You know, right. Bob, I'm sorry. You know, Bob, this is a Maris team that's 349 out of 350 coming in a game and assists per, per game. Now, at the half, they only had two, but they only had three turnovers, and the defense was incredible on Fairfield. Now they're starting to turn the ball over, and that's been a problem all year for this Maris team. Oh, they delivered a turnover right for you there, Joe, as Chrysler comes away with it and steps into a three. No good. Allen Jean Rose knocked it out of bounds. See, the Stags have had some good opportunities on their last couple of possessions to extend this run, which going back to the end of the first half is nine unanswered for Fairfield. Maris led by as many as 13 on a couple of occasions late in that first half. See, the last time they actually uh, scored a point in this game, the, uh, the Maris scoring drought. Let's see. 4.03 to go in the first half was when they had their last bucket. Stag's defense has been outstanding in the second half. Chrysler out on Bell. Harris dribbles, spins, puts it up. Another good defensive sequence by the Stags. They have it back inside 16 to go in the game. Fairfield down by four. Cruz tosses it out on top for Green. Chrysler, backdoor look for Green. Gives for Wojcik. Here's the three. Too strong. Cruz, a good rebound. Reset for Benning. The three in the air. It's good. And it makes it a one-point game. Great second chance opportunity created there by Jesus Cruz. Bob, I think things were too easy for Marist offensively in the first half. That allowed him to take some of that energy they didn't need to use and use it on defense. Now it's become harder offensively because Fairfield's picked up their defense and they're starting to show some flaws on the defensive end. Oh, with five in five minutes and six seconds, Marist has zero assists and five turnovers. And that ends a long drought for Marist. Over eight minutes without a point until Bell swishes home that three. Big bucket there for the Red Foxes. Jesus Cruz in the circle. The fake, the drive off balance, got off the shot. It didn't drop. It would have counted. But it did not drop. And so Jesus Cruz, who has not gone to the foul line that much at all this season, will take a couple of free throws. Right here when he gets the ball, you see the replay. You hear John Dunn yell, ISO. So you could tell right away it was a play designed to get Cruz the ball. Remember, 15 feet and in, if there's no defensive help, He's almost unstoppable. That was only the ninth free throw attempt of the season for Jesus Cruz, who had not taken a free throw in a game since December the 8th against Holy Cross. Remember, this is a guy who a few seasons ago made 13 out of 13 in Alumni Hall in a win against Canisius. Cruz makes one out of two there. Three-point game. So the Stags have battled all the way back from a 13-point deficit to make this a one-possession game. Bob, probably the main reason why Cruz hasn't gone to the free throw. And last year, he was 18% from three. This year, he's up to 30. So shooting the three a little better this year. Wild shot gets knocked out of bounds. Belongs to Maris. They'll have seven to shoot. 
Maris 1 and 2 in the back, Stags 2 and 0 oh in the back. Maris, two losses have come against Iona. They beat Ryder, a team they play on Sunday. Ricardo Wright, scoop, no good. And off the miss, Chrysler takes the tip and hands it off for the point guard, Caleb Green. Caleb Green, pretty much a, a player that Stags count on to play 38, 39, 40 minutes a game. As his shot swatted away there, and the only good thing about that is that the Stags will keep possession, 13 to shoot. Fairfield three and two in this building this year. This is their MAC home opener. The inbounds to Wojcik. Here's a three. It's good, and we are tied at 35 as the Stags have come all the way back from 13 down. And Jake Wojcik appears to be regaining his stroke. Nice pop-up slide there defensively by Caleb Green. Personifying the kind of D the Stags have played in this second half. Off of the miss. Bell puts it up, left hand no good. Followed it up, got it back. Watching this game, want to send him well wishes. He just went through uh, a health bout. We try to put that uh, into English. Had a little bit of... A health scare recently, but he's fine. He's good. We're happy to report that as Ricardo Wright breaks the tie, makes it 37 35. Gene is up, running. He's good. And uh, glad he is fine as we start this uh, new year. So, well wishes to Gene, who has connections to both of these programs. Turnover Bas on Wojcik. Basketball life for knew him from my high school days at Talentine when. Uh, he was coach and athletic director at uh, Stepanak, and Gene's not here tonight, but I'm sure we'll see him shortly. He's not here, Bob, tonight? No. Uh, recuperating, but again, he's we'll fine. We'll see him. He's yep. good. We'll see him, yep. He, uh, he likes to get on that ferry, has a home <laughs> on Long Island, a longtime Fairfield resident. Alan Gene Rose puts up the three, no good. Maybe he'll take in that matinee on uh, Tuesday, and that's something that Fairfield – Fans should make note of if you can uh, play hooky and get out of work. It's then the Iona Gales on Tuesday afternoon. But that's not Fairfield's next game. They play against Sunday afternoon up in Albany against Siena. This is a tough part of the schedule for the Stags as Cruz has it swatted away. Now Maris trying to regain its footing in this game after the Stags came back on them. Right short jumper. Gets the friendly bounce, and that's four straight points for the Red Foxes. Yeah, it's a great decision by Ricardo Wright. He's got the ball at the head of the break. He can go right or left, keep it himself. He's under control, watching where the defense is playing him. They backed off. He pulled up under control, two-foot jump stop. Got the friendly roll, but knocked in the 15-footer. Stags trying to re-energize as Cruz puts up a three, and it hit. Maido out. Edu Paye, who probably would have played some minutes. So it's going to be interesting uh, to see what the intensity is like the last five minutes because you're you're talking about both teams who normally play 10, 9, 10, 11 guys right now playing 7 and 8. Benning on right who has 12 for Marist. Erasmi reposting for Jones, defended by Cook. Nice bounce pass by Jones, and he found Erasmi underneath. That was a nice-looking play. Well, it's a good coaching play. In other words... Jones posted up and kicked it out. He reposted, Bob. He got the ball even deeper, okay? When he got it deeper, Wojcik had to help a little bit, lost sight of his man. Jones delivered the easy pass to harass me for the layup. So Marist has responded with six straight. Now the Stags look to answer. Green penetrating, floating it up off of the mark. And here comes San Sele accelerating hard to the hoop, and he drives and scoops it through to make it 43-35. And now Marist is back in front by... Bob, that's the basket that was typical of Marist in the on uh, December the 1st in the loss of Poughkeepsie, and then blew that six-point lead with four minutes to go and trying to uh, hold on to a lead here tonight on the Stags. In the MAC reopener for Fairfield. They haven't played any MAC games since early December when they swept the Buffalo trip. Cook has a shot block, late whistle. And Marist uh, upset with that 
late call, but it's going to send Supreme Cook to the line for a couple. You know, and, and I, I like the decision uh, on both teams. Maris, here's the drive by Cruz. Maris, uh, let's see if there's a foul here. Yeah, I think there's. It's a late call, Bob, but it's the right call. And that's the most important thing. But Maris comes out of the timeout in his own. Again, hoping to maybe catch Fairfield on their heels. And, you know, guys, I, I, I'm talking to coaches and players out there. There's a fallacy against zones. You've got to pass the ball on the perimeter and you shouldn't dribble the ball. That's a fallacy. You've got to attack gaps with your dribble. Cruz did that, got to the basket, drew the help, made the pass, Cook at the foul line for two. Made the first. Made the second. That ends an 8-0 Maris run. Fairfield down by six. Full court pressure from the Stags. We're inside 10 to go. Wright handles the pressure. Gets it into the front court. Benning shadowing him as Wright trips, falls, fouled. And it's going to be Taj Benning. As we said, he was shadowing him and clearly a little too tightly. Only the first foul on Benning. Third on the team, five team fouls on Marist. And Noah Harris looks to trigger the play. That's Braden Bell, who hit a big three in the second half for Marist. Bright misses. Bell hit a three that ended a long drought for Marist. They had gone over eight minutes without a point going back to the first half, and that kind of calmed them down. And now they lead it by six, but the Stags have the ball. AJR gives up for Cruz. Dribbling hard into traffic. Nowhere to go. Puts it up. Short, defender well, and right there, Jesus Cruz did not have a flight plan. Didn't really know where he was going with that one. So it remains a six-point game. That's going to be a touch foul on Cruz. Reaches in, gets a piece of Bell. In case you were just joining us, both of these squads are shorthanded. Chris Mido for Fairfield is day-to-day -day with a lower back injury. Jason Edipai is out for the season with a stress fracture. Of course, no uh, Jalen Leach for the Stags as well. He's been out most of the year with a foot injury. Not the foot that he injured last year in a game against Marist as a three-pointer is put through by Ricardo Wright. 46-37. Marist on top. Right now has 15 points. I mentioned earlier his size and his ability to shoot over people is uncanny. With the shot clock running down, he basically got a handoff, Bob. Did not create any space with a dribble or a pivot. Just rose up and shot over the Fairfield defender. And, you know, uh, he is reminding people that he is a premier player on a team. In a sense, he had been a little overshadowed in recent games by Zhao Ituka, who is not available tonight because he's in the health and safety protocols. Wright is their leading scorer, but Ituka had been averaging over 18 a game over their previous five, but Wright stepping up on a night Ituka is not available as Benning puts up a three, back rims it. Stags down nine. Harris, Jones, jump hook. Good, well done by the big man. Jordan Jones. And Bob, that post entry should never come. Essentially, it came from the top. Supreme Court sleeping a little bit, got caught behind. He's got to be on the high side to discourage that pass. It's an easy pass post entry by Noah Harris. And Jordan Jones is one of those guys, you let him catch it, he can score. Well, Joe, Caleb Green doing what you said the Stags have to do against the zone, but he could not finish. And here comes right. Matt harassed me. He's been around this Maris program for a while. Gives up. For Bell. So the Stags had fought back from a 13 point deficit, and now they have to try to fight back from an 11 point deficit. Maybe more, depending upon what Maris does here with Harassme missing it. Down 11. Stags do have plenty of time. Over seven minutes to go in the game, but Fairfield again has to generate some offense. Cook for Benning. Benning driving hard. Contact. They play on, and it's a turnover on Benning as he bumped into. Jones and Jones gets it back and returned home after Christmas, came back. They had the test and a lot of the Stags tested positive. And so they only got back to full practices earlier this week. 
Bell hits another big three. Remember, earlier in the second half, he hit the three that ended an eight-minute drought for Marist, and he hits another one there. Bob, he plays 12-and-a-half minutes game, and I've said this many times. Every team is looking for that guy off the bench to make a difference. Brayton Bell has done that tonight. Marist back in the man-to-man. -man. John Dunn's team's gonna, done a good job switching defenses in this one as Green misses the three. Here is Harris. He's a good three-point shooter, and there's another one for him. And now Maris is starting to break this game open. Noah Harris. They have been the last couple of years. But because of their defense, when it's effective, they kind of kick their offense into another gear. And they've gotten hot, knocking into three-point shots lately. Fairfield has gone over seven minutes by my count without a bucket. They do have a couple of the Supreme Cook free throws that were made around the 10-minute mark, but no field goals since the 13-47 mark. That was when Jake Wojcik knocked down the three. Here's Wojcik trying another three. Side rims it. Rebound, pinballed out to right. Gives it up for Sele. Gives it back to right. And right now, Maris is running past the Stags. Well, it's a very unathletic team Fairfield has it right now. You see Taj Benning coming in. And uh, Fairfield is relying too much on the three. Long shots, long rebounds. And Maris, as you mentioned, is running away with it. Cruz spinning in the blocks. Bottled up, got off the shot. And off of the rebound, or off of the miss, I should say, Bell yanks down the rebound. Oh, Marist has gone on a 13-0 run to throw the knockout punch at the Stags here. A lot of time to go, but Stags showing no signs of being able to come back in a game where they fell behind by 13 in the first half, came back to tie it, but now they have fallen into an even bigger hole as Chrysler hits a straightaway three. He hit that at the 457 mark, so it was roughly nine minutes between field goals for the Stags. And you don't mind that shot. Here's a 6'9 guy, Zach Chrysler. That's his game. 88% of his field goals attempts are threes. He's 42%. So when he can catch it in rhythm, in transition, on secondary offense on one pass, that's a good high percentage shot for him. Blow by there by Braden Bell. More paint points for the Foxes. I'll say it again, Bob. This is not a Fairfield team that plays zone, okay? Jay Young does not believe in it, but if you were a team that played zone, this would be the time you want to do it. Maris getting too many easy looks at the rim. Now, considering the circumstances, uh, maybe that Jay's going to have to occasionally break out that zone. He did admit as much to us um, earlier this week when we spoke to him. He said he kind of breaks out into a rash at the thought of <laughs> playing the zone, but right well, the other thing, Bob, if after the COVID pause and you only got a couple of games to get ready, you really don't want to work on something new. Your concentration should be getting the players back into game situations via conditioning and drills and so on and so forth. Caleb Green with the bucket, but it's a 16-point game with under four to go. In fact, three and a half remaining in what is shaping up as Fairfield's first conference loss of the season. They won up at Niagara and at Canisius, but here at home in their Mac home opener as Chrysler tries another three. That's short. Stags on their way to a defeat. No Chris Mido. Jason Edapai is done for the season. Jalen Leach. Really don't know if the Stags are going to have him over the coming weeks. Sam Kelosele puts up the three off the turnaround. And uh, no one's going to feel sorry for you because uh, now the game's going to come at you real quickly as Long backs up for the three. He's now 0 for 3 from behind the stripe. 2.43 remaining as we welcome you back inside the Webster Bank Arena in Bridgeport. Bob Huesler along with the Fairfield Hall of Famer, Joe DeSantis, counting it down here with Marist on its way to a victory that will even its MAC record at 2-2, two and two, and they'll go above 500 at 7 and 6. And... Joe, uh, we were talking about the possibility of Jay Young trying a zone. Well, guess what? A zone. And it creates a Maris turnover. Bob, you're probably not going to believe what I'm saying, 
but I think he's actually using it to work on it for a possibility to use it next game. I was going to say that. Okay, I, actually, what I was going to do, and you answered the question, do you think Jay is rolling it out now and maybe he's going to be using that on Sunday up in well, Albany against Siena? Well, the reason why I didn't want to say it, I didn't think you'd believe it, is because you, not that you got a chance to win this game, but you want to show that you got a chance to win. And... Um, but showing the 1-3-1 is something we have not seen and maybe something that we're going to see in the near future. I don't know if Jay is breaking out in that rash that he <laughs> talked about, but he's decided to try it for a Fairfield team that is undermanned and, and just as critically, you know, trying to get itself back into a collective game shape. This is a team that had a lot of players who were sidelined by COVID and they're just uh, getting back up to... Uh, to running speed, just four days of practice coming into this one as that pass slips through Ricardo Wright's hands. And Joe DeSantis almost had a chance <laughs> to show off his own hands there. Uh, you're going to get a look at the second here at the Fairfield schedule. We mentioned that Siena game. This is a tough stretch for the Stags. This game tonight against an excellent Marist team, followed by a road game at Siena, then back on Tuesday afternoon here in Bridgeport to play the defending champions, the Iona Gales, and then next Sunday up in Hamden against Quinnipiac. And Monmouth return engagement with Marist on the road. Well, the conference is here, Joe, ready or not. COVID stoppages or not. The games are going to come at you fast and furiously, and Stags have got to be ready. And tonight, they fell behind by 13, fought back to tie the game at 35, and then Marist applied the knockout in the form of a 21-2 run over a stretch of about nine-plus minutes to put this game away, knocking the Stags to the deck as Taj Benning gets up off of the deck. So you're uh, Jay Young, Joe, and um, you only have one day of preparation. That's tomorrow before you go up to um, Albany. I'm sure the Stags will travel, actually, to Albany tomorrow. So uh, you'll get up there and, you know, go through a light practice. Uh, what's the message to the team, uh, you know, from your coaching standpoint? Well, the message is going to be more verbal than uh, demonstration, as you mentioned. There's not a whole lot you can do in a day, but they'll go over the scouting report, go over the strengths and weaknesses of Siena and try to take advantage of it. But the message verbally is, gentlemen, I don't care if we have five guys or 15 guys. we got to play harder as hard as we can for as long as we can on both ends. And the Stags, again, without making an excuse, maybe pause-related, injury-related, did not do that tonight. Maris playing hard right to the end here. That ball will stay at Fairfield's end. Very impressed with what we've seen from this Maris team. And um, we didn't see the guy who's been their best player in recent games, Zhao Ituka in the uh, health and safety protocols, along with the backup point guard. Actually, the guy's been a starter for them, Raheem Sullivan, and right. their backup big, Victor Eno. They're all out in the health and safety protocols, but this is a well-coached team, and, boy, they, they were impressive in this one. Well, I asked them uh, in one of my keys is to win the Rock 26% in this game. We mentioned the three-point numbers were not good at all, just 18% from three, and for the game, they've made 15 of 57 attempts Overall, that's 26%. And uh, suffice it to say, and I have the numbers right here, I don't even know why I'm looking. You know that's their season low, and it is. But they haven't been shooting the wall, ball lately uh, very well, and they haven't been scoring. I mean, you, you don't want to take away the confidence of your team, so you want to encourage the three-point shot. But, Bob, what you want Green to speak up as well. Uh, this is a Fairfield team that, you know, you don't look at this team and see – that one guy who is, um, you know, the alpha male, so to speak. He's a bunch of really good basketball players, some of whom uh, are quieter than others. Taj Benning is a great example of a leader. Uh, Jesus Cruz as well. None of them uh, overly demonstrative, but uh, you see Benning. I think he's the guy who, you know, you want to lean on right now. And Caleb Green, absolutely, as guys who can lead you out of uh, the slump right now for the Stags, who are on their way to their first MAC loss of the season. 
Walk-on player for the uh, Red Foxes is in there right now. Terrence Eccles is on the line. And he hits the free throw, and the uh, Maris bench, as you can see there in the, the background, they're applauding loudly. Always fun to watch the walk-on get in and, and do his thing. And uh, another walk-on, Thomas Bocelli, uh, Botticelli is getting his name in the box score here. So Botticelli checks in, and Terrence Eccles just scored. Bob, golden rule, never screw up an Italian name. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I could slip that past you. That would be like trying to get sunrise past the rooster. <laughs> You know, for a game as one-sided as this one, it's taken a while to get to the, the final buzzer. But I, I, Bob, I got to tell you, it's not been a good night for your whole life. Basketball is most, one of the most toughest and grueling sports to play. Stags are playing right to the final buzzer, and there's Green, who hit a three a moment ago with the steal. Jake Wojcik puts up the three. Run down by Cook. Cook has a double-double, and he just adds to his point total as he scores, and he is fouled. So Supreme Cook now has 12 points, maybe 13 to go along with 14 rebounds. The 14 rebounds, Joe, has just matched his career high. The double-double is his third of the season. So Supreme Cook accounting for himself again very, very nicely. On the night, his team is going to... At least go down fighting. Maris sees control of this game with a 21-2 run here in the second half. And now the Red Foxes will just dribble it out. 